Hey guys, Christian here, and today I'm just going to give you three quick tips on using your ruffler foot. Dead souls! Dead souls! Dead souls! Dead souls! Dead souls! Dead souls! Dead souls. This is hell! Well, hopefully you've seen the episode where I sewed a three-tiered ruffled skirt for my daughter. If not, you can check that out right here. Ooh, magic button. Okay, I used a ruffle foot to make that skirt. You can use the gathering method, but I thought, hey, if there's a machine that can do this, oh, 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 I'm a man, let's use that machine. But there are a couple things that drove me nuts about the ruffler foot, so I'm going to give you those three quick tips to make it easier for you when you use yours. Now the ruffle foot is very stiff when it comes out of the box. The fabric you're going to put a ruffle on goes in here. If you're attaching it to another strip of fabric, that goes underneath here. Once you put in your ruffle fabric, you push in the arm like so. Now this was nearly impossible to do with this foot when it came out of the box. So I recommend opening and closing the ruffle foot about 10 to 20 times. This will loosen it up and take away that stiffness that's on it when it comes out of the box. You could put a dab of oil right here to make it turn and open easier, but I would only put a very small drop because you also want it to have plenty of tension so it can hold that fabric in. So don't over oil it, but give it some open and closing movements to loosen it up. Here's how you adjust your ruffle foot. To put a ruffle every one stitch, every six stitches, every 12 stitches, and the star turns off the ruffle foot. Then you have this plastic dial where you can dial in the distance between those ruffles. Now, ironically, considering how tight this was, this knob was very loose out of the box. So I loosened it all the way up, moved it back and forth to make sure it worked freely, and then I tried the zero mark, and I tried all the way up here to six, but I discovered that the ruffles I liked were pretty much in the middle at three. So once I got it to three, I held that in place, and then I tightened up this plastic knob. Why they didn't make this metal like the rest of the ruffle foot, I will never know. Now, when you put your fabric in your ruffle foot, it grabs onto it very tightly. But if you try to pull it backwards, these little teeth can grab and rip the fabric. So you can't really pull it back to where you want it to be. That's where I take a little screwdriver, slide it under the black feet of your ruffle foot, pop them up just a little bit, and then adjust my fabric where I need it to be. Now it's situated exactly where I want it under the needle and I haven't ripped the fabric on these little teeth. You want this to stay tight because once you have it in place, you lower the foot and you push it back like this. If that's not tight, it's not going to give you a proper ruffle, but you don't want to pull back on your fabric and rip it either. This will save you from wasting a lot of fabric on this end and cutting away so much waste. When attaching your ruffle foot or any piece of equipment, make sure to use the right size screwdriver. If you use a small screwdriver like this with a big slotted hole, it's just going to damage your screw and leave scratch and scar marks on it and it may ruin the head. So if it's got a fat line here, Use a fat screwdriver. Okay, that's just a free tip. So there you have it, three and a half quick tips on using your ruffler foot. It's really a great tool, but like I said, number one, coming out of the box, it's very tight. So you wanna work and loosen it a little bit. Number two, that adjustment knob can be very loose. So loosen it all the way, put it precisely where you need it, and then tighten it up. Also, use the right tool for the right job. If it's a big-headed screw, use a big-headed screwdriver. And our third tip, 
was to work your fabric past those teeth, then use a little screwdriver to lift them up and pull your fabric back. This will cause less tearing, less pulling, and less of the threads on the edge of your fabric to come loose. I hope you've enjoyed these three quick tips. Don't forget to go to dadsos.com for more, or you can go to dadsos.com slash YouTube. That'll take you straight to our playlist so you can see all of our videos like the ruffle skirt I made with the ruffler foot, or the leggings I made my daughter, or our office space parody, or one of my many failed projects. Also, if you go to dadsos.com slash shop, you can get your own sew, fail, repeat t-shirt, and if you sign up for the mailing list, well, I like to give away free stuff, like these awesome Fisker pinking shears. Yeah, they're coming out next time on our next newsletter to a lucky viewer. Thanks for watching Dad Sews, and we will see you next time. This production is brought to you by the Plaid Dad Blog Podcast Network. For more information, visit plaiddadblog.com.